30th November 1979, Abiri Kachio Myabalia, the first black African to be consecrated as Bishop of the Anglican Protestant Church in East, Central and Southern Africa, was laid to rest. Bishop Balia had peacefully breathed his last on 26th November 1979 at the grand old age of 102. In recognition of his pioneer status, President Godfrey Lukongwa Binaisa granted B Bishop Balia a state funeral which was held at St. John's Cathedral, Kabarole, whose construction Bishop Balia had spearheaded in 1931. <laughs> Residing over the funeral service was Bishop Dunstan Suvuga of Namirembe Diocese, representing Archbishop Sylvanus Swani, who was abroad. Also present was former Archbishop of Uganda, Rwanda, Burundi, and Boga Zaire, His Grace Erika Sabiti. Among those attending the state funerals, Army Commander Tito Kero, Army Chief of Staff David Oitojok, both of who have since passed on. Also present was the Speaker of Parliament, Honorable Edward Rugumayo, and President Yoweri Museveni, who was then Minister for Regional Cooperation. In a moving eulogy, President Binaisa, who was accompanied by his wife, said, Your Excellences, Cabinet Ministers, Members of the Consultative Council, Commander of the Uganda Army, the Chief of Staff, distinguished guests, mourners. It's indeed with a heavy heart that I stand here before you as one of the mourners of this great man, of this great son of Uganda, not only in his capacity as a churchman and a church leader, but as a nationalist, a Ugandan who believes in the unity of this country, a Ugandan who spread the good name of Uganda, a Ugandan who served other countries in Africa, not only in his own, his own country, but he served with distinction in Mboga Zaire, a Ugandan who walked all the way from Kabarole to Mboga on foot. He crossed the Samleki River many times in dugout canoes, he spared no effort to bring about, to contribute to the unity of Africa. This is the spirit in which I mourn for him. This is the spirit in which the government of the Uganda National Liberation Front, of which I happen to be the leader, of which I happen to be the chairman of its National Executive Council, this is the spirit in which it has honored this great son of Uganda. Some people say, why do we, why have we said that the late Abel Badia should have a state funeral? He deserves, in my submission, every bit of it. Not only as a bishop, but as a Ugandan. He was the very first in the Anglican community in Eastern Central Africa to be appointed a bishop. He is with the, on the same kind of rating as the late Bishop, Archbishop Joseph Kiwanuka, the Catholic bishop, the very first Catholic bishop who was also consecrated around about 1937 or 38. But then, the late Joseph Kiwanka is not with us. He died several years ago. So I think the Uganda National Liberation Front is clearly acquitted of any kind of accusation as we mourn this great nationalist. I want to quote from Shakespeare, although I did it some 30 years ago, but let me see whether my memory still serves me right. You all did love since I once not without cause. What cause withholds you now to mourn for him? All judgment that art fled to British beasts and men have lost their reason. My heart is in the coffin there of Caesar. I must pause 
till it come back to me. who never entered church with shoes on his feet all his life are several edifices including this effigy in Fort Porto town and carrying on Bishop Abiri Baria's bloodline is his son Brigadier Ronich Humuro Baria Uganda's envoy to South Sudan who says his father's humility is his guiding principle this story is compiled by Tony Geoffrey Owana, who will not be surprised to learn that many Ugandans have never heard of Bishop Abel Kachomia Balia until Vision Group relived his memory. May the soul of Bishop Abel Kachomia Balia rest in eternal peace. <laughs>